Hello, I'm Ren from Renguistics. As always, please check the description for corrections, citations, and maybe even a funny comment or two. The Tulu language, commonly known as the Tulu language, is spoken by about 1.7 million people in the southwestern Indian states of Karnataka and Kerala, and is in a bit of a unique position. It has its own cinema. <laughs> literary tradition, theater, popular music, and everything else you'd expect from a language widely spoken in the modern day. And yet, unlike almost every other major language spoken in the south of India, Tulu does not have its own script, instead using the Kannada and Malayalam scripts when it is necessary for it to be written down. But this was not always the case. In fact, believe it or not, not only was this not always the case, there was also a time where this was always not the case. Tulu actually used the Tigalari script derived from a common ancestor with Malayalam. Texts written in Tulu using this script date back to the 12th century, although it's important to note that the script was primarily used for Sanskrit inscriptions. So why isn't it in modern use? Why did they just abandon this perfectly good script that they've been using for longer than I have even been alive? That has something to do with printing standards and the introduction of a Kannada script press in the region and the absence of a similar Tigalari press. Tulu itself has also undergone pressure from neighboring languages. Indeed, it's in a bit of a precarious position. This isn't from a lack of trying to bolster Tulu culture and establish themselves as a fully recognized ethnic group in India. Classes in the area teach the language and script, and many locals support the usage of it in signage and governmental institutions. However, taking a journey on Google Maps to Tulu Nadu would be quite unlikely to show you any usage of this script. And one of the main reasons is this, a lack of Unicode support. Despite attempts dating back to 2011 to give most computers support for Tigalari fonts and writing, this script, with the potential to be used by millions, still has absolutely no way of being written without downloading extra software and using custom Unicode spaces. But hey, hold up, what even is Unicode? According to their own website, the Unicode Consortium started out as a standards body for character encoding and derives its name from three main goals. Universal, addressing the needs of world languages. Uniform, fixed width codes for efficient access. And unique, bit sequence has only one interpretation into character codes. Since that time, it has expanded to be far more than character encoding. Its work now includes the character properties and algorithms, language and locale data for internationalization, and production software libraries to make everything accessible to programs. Like most organizations based around standardization, Unicode makes it easier to convey information and carry out tasks. In this case, Unicode does all the coding for fonts to make sure that characters appear at the right widths and heights, in proper lines, that they space properly, that characters such as accent marks interact with each other properly, all so that you can easily switch from one font to another with just a few clicks. And it's used everywhere. Your phones, computers, smart fridges, and, you know, those really high-tech label makers, they all use Unicode characters to render some series of computery numbers into the text that you or somebody else typed. And for most languages, it's really damn good at it. However, not all scripts are created equal. Not as in some are better than others, but as in, they work quite differently. Logographies, like Chinese, require thousands of encoded characters, whereas even extended versions of Latin or Cyrillic usually only contain, at most, a few hundred characters. For syllabaries and alpha syllabaries, each syllable must be constructed to make sure that they can render properly. This can cause lots of issues because often, combining diacritics will change depending on context, and Tigalari, with its complex ligatures, is no exception. The 2017 Unicode proposal takes up 82 pages, with painfully painful detail and tons of guidelines for every minute character. After all, if Unicode messes up a script, it won't be well-liked. This is certainly extra true for a language already written in another script. It might not even be used at all. Take Myanmar, for example. This country of 50 million people primarily speaks Myanmar, or Burmese, nowadays known as Myanmar, which is another language that has its own script. And despite this being one of the more widely used scripts in the world, 
Unicode support for Myanmar started out really bad. The rendering necessary for Burmese, nowadays known as Myanmar, was not implemented at all until 2005, at which point it was in a bad state and needed to undergo significant revisions in future versions. In addition, Myanmar, undergoing heavy sanctions from the West, actually developed most of their localization technology, well, locally, but in ways that were largely incompatible with a lot of wider encoding. Enter Zoyu. This font proved to be an excellent solution to the issues the nation faced. It operated based on its own character set, and when smartphone manufacturers and the like began selling more of their products in Myanmar, they decided to not use Unicode and simply went with Zoyu. This caused a lot of issues. For example, Zoyu only worked for the Burmese language, nowadays known as Myanmar, which isn't the only language written in this script. It also had frequent rendering issues and required separate installations and fonts. There were multiple ways to encode most sequences of characters, which made Zoji a nightmare for character-based sorting. And its lack of Unicode support meant that most websites couldn't readily host Zoji text. And of course, text in Zoji would not render properly for folks using Unicode, often spitting out what Wikipedia calls garbled text, and I call... <laughs> Evidently, if Unicode messes up one of their standards, it will hinder the online development of said language for a while, and lead people to seek their own creative, if imperfect, solutions. Tigalari, being very difficult to encode and not used all that actively, might look like a waste of resources to work on. However, it is also important for researchers encoding historical documents written in the language, and this has been plenty of incentive in the past for many dead languages to get their own Unicode blocks. Even some scripts that are mostly undeciphered, such as the Khitan small script, and no, by Khitan I'm not referring to the similarly named Islamic religious practice of a certain circumcisatory nature, and yes, I did just make up the word circumcisatory, please credit me if you decide to use it, are encoded as fully as possible. It's hard to say exactly why Tigalari is not encoded. Perhaps it is too difficult to standardize. Individual inscriptions have tons of unique practices, such as using the character Shri as a space filler or ornament, Didu marks appearing just about anywhere in relation to the baseline, several variations existing for every single vowel and many consonants as well all contribute to the difficult work that would be standardizing this script. But for many who seek wider recognition, such as a Tulu scholar named Vaishnavi Murti, who has a banging YouTube channel that totally isn't just uh, another person with the same name or anything, the encoding of the script would mean validation. Quote an article on the subject from restofworld.org. Growing up, Vaishnavi Murti would often visit her grandfather's 500-year-old home in Mangaluru, a coastal city in southern India, over 200 miles west from Mangaluru. Shelves had been carved into the house's antique walls, which held dozens of palm-leaf manuscript written in the Tulu script, also called Digalari. Murti's grandfather was fluent in the ancient characters, and she vividly remembers struggling as a five-year-old to read what he wrote in his notebooks. To the untrained eye, some of the letters resembled the spiral-shaped Indian dessert jalebi, or a pretzel knot. She was dazzled by the mysterious symbols and begged her grandfather to teach her about them. Murti's grandfather passed away before he could share his knowledge, but her curiosity about the rare script endured. For almost two decades, the now 37-year-old typeface designer has spearheaded a winding and sometimes controversial effort to bring what she calls the Tulu Tigalari script into the Unicode standard. It's hard to say whether the encoding of this script would guarantee its use. Nowadays, most Tulu is written with the Kannada script already, and changing up signage, creating new fonts, and teaching folks the new, more complicated script might just result in it being dead in the water. But it's also an important cultural symbol for some, and in today's modern world, Unicode representation would help affirm the existence of Tulu as a distinct group in the modern era. Thanks for watching this video. If you wish to see more like it, comment on my video some linguistics related ideas you'd love to see videos on, and be sure to subscribe for more notifications and more videos. Au revoir.